Dine on Sky View. St. Joseph Crown, Experimental 476, Victor Tango off the active on Bravo. Terminal uh, 6, Victor Tango, St. Joseph Crown, taxi park via taxi alpha. Taxi park via alpha, 6, Victor Tango. Airport 5, we have one more on the right base and then we'll get you in there. Airport 5, Roger, I appreciate it. That's a pretty bad squeal. Uh, I have a smoke tank. And it injects smoke oil into the exhaust and leaves a trail of smoke. Uh, there's nothing in the tank right now. I got a little bit of work to do to try to get that really thick, you know, big puffy white smoke. Um, I don't think I'm putting enough volume into the the exhaust. But that's a future project that I need to sort out. That's pretty neat. Wind one one zero at seven. Visibility one zero. Sky clear. Temperature one three two point zero nine. I turn to three zero three zero. Expect the visual approach. Runway three five in use. Winds that arrive from equipment located midfield. Advisors to contact your information, Charlie. Was he Lima check wheels on runway three five one zero six zero at four clear for the option? Hey, Whiskey Lima is geared down, clear the option three five. St. Joe ground experimental for Charlie Mike, ready for taxi, uh, vicinity uh, alpha on the ramp. Experimental for Charlie Mike, St. Joe ground, runway three five, taxi the taxi alpha. Taxi three five via alpha for Charlie Mike. So the way airports name everything, taxiways have letters, runways have numbers. The runway number corresponds with the magnetic heading. So runway 35 is aligned with 350 degrees magnetic. They drop off the last zero. And that way you always know, you know which runway you're talking about. Well, it, you can look at your compass and, and verify that you're on the right runway and, and all that. Um, so when we call for 
taxi clearance. He's clearing us to taxi two, runway three five, which is the start of runway three five is over there, via taxiway alpha, which is what we're on right now. Give us a route and a destination. If we decided we wanted to go somewhere else or we wanted to go back, we'd have to call him back and get an, a different clearance. I see. And none of that is a problem. Uh, you just have to coordinate your activities with the tower because they're responsible for making sure no one conflicts with, with anybody else. Experimental 5-8 Whiskey Lima is clear, uh, 3-5 at Bravo, or at Charlie, thanks, Park. Experimental 5-8 Whiskey Lima, San Diego, ground text, part via text file. Park via Alpha, 5-8 Whiskey Lima. All right, run-up is complete. We'll just do our final check. So seat belts are tight, canopy is locked, tram is set, all our switches are set, radio is tuned. We'll switch over to tower here in just a second. Altimeter is programmed. Fuel, we've got three quarters of a tank. Temps are good. Fuel valve is on. And the controls are free. Got trim. Uh, we'll Jackie 3668 Kilo, San Diego Tower, report a left midfield downwind to runway 35. We'll talk about that in a second, okay? Midfield for 3668 Kilo. St. Joe Tower Experimental for Charlie Mike is at Alpha and 35 ready to go with Charlie. Experimental 604 Charlie Mike, St. Joe Tower, runway 35, wind 100 at 10, one clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff. Runway 35, Port Charlie Mike, and we'll be making a uh, ultimately a southeast departure. Port Charlie Mike, Roger, right turn out to the southeast is approved. Okay, thanks, Port Charlie Mike. So he gave us a specific clearance to enter the runway and then take off and then ultimately to make turns to leave the direction we want to leave from. All right, stick is back, mixture is rich. We will get lined up on the center line. Okay, track and center line, throttle coming up. Airspeed is alive. Nose down for speed or what? Uh-huh. Terminal 4, Charlie Mike, right turn out approved, report 5 miles southeast. Okay, we'll report 5 miles southeast, Port Charlie Mike. So he, uh, he told us to report 5 miles away to the southeast, and that's because when we reach 5 miles, we're outside of his airspace, and he no longer has to worry about us.
St. Joe Tower, Cherokee 3668 Kilo is entering left downwind for 35, full stop. Cherokee uh, 68 Kilo, not sign check wheels on runway 351100 at 8, clear to land. Coming across the bluff now. 68 Kilo. So as the morning uh, warms up, the air starts to get more active and energetic. So the area of turbulence is growing, so it's a little higher than it was when we first flew here. But we're at 3,300 feet right now, and but now it's uh, smooth again. So it's it's got about 500 feet higher, that little turbulent area. Okay. And that's not a problem, that's just sort of the way the atmosphere works. Cherokee, 68 kilo on site. 68 kilo. St. Joe Tower, Fort Charlie Mike is clear to the southeast. Fort Charlie Mike, free exchange period. Have a good day. Thanks. We'll see you next time, Fort Charlie Mike. Alrighty, so we are uh, we're leveled off. We got our engine set to about cruise power, but now we can just sort of enjoy the scenery. Uh, you asked about the trim, so just like the rudder has that trim tab to help the air hits the trim tab, and then the trim tab pushes the rudder to the direction it needs to go. The same thing happens on the elevator. So there's a little trim tab that you can control. It's movable from this lever here. I got you. And that helps set the airplane so that you're not climbing or descending. So right now, the plane is pretty well trimmed out. We're not, we're not descending and all that. But if, say, well, it's, we're slightly turning. Um, but if, if we wanted to constantly climb or constantly descend, we would need to hold pressure on the stick to keep us to where we want the airplane to be. We can use that trim tab to help take some of the pressure off. Ah, I see. And, and not all airplanes have movable trim tabs. Some only have them on one surface or another. But it's not uncommon for airplanes to go through trim changes, uh, depending on how much power you have in, right. uh, the speed of the airplane, that kind of stuff. Okay. Hey, you are. And with the radio, there's are there just uh what chan what bands do you pick up? What channels are you picking up, and how do you know what's what? So there there is a uh, a range of frequencies that has been designated by the Federal Communications Commission as uh, as dedicated for aviation use, and so all the entities that need a frequency, whether it's a local airport, 
whether it's a tower or ground control or whatever, or just a, a weather broadcast that pilots can tune into, uh, they apply for and get permission from the FCC to use that frequency. And then that is entered into the database, and it's printed on charts. It's included in the, the database on my, on my map. You can get it on your app and your phone. Once it's in the database, you can get it a variety of ways. So like for right now, if we want to know, um, say we're going to go into Kansas City International here, I can access the database here, and I can go to the communications tab, and uh, these are all the comm frequencies, and I can just scroll down and find who I need to talk to. I need to talk to the tower, and the tower at 125.750, and tune that into the radio here. Okay. And then I'm on the right frequency. All right. If you don't have a, a map like that, you can get it on your phone, on, on a yeah. aviation app. Um, or, uh, you know, kind of old school, you, uh, you open up the printed copy of the database, then you look at the airport you're going to, and you write down on a note card their frequencies, then you take that note card and fly with you. I see. When we go into Roosterville, there's nobody on the other end of the line. And you're just right. talking right. to other aircraft, basically. Yeah. So we just have to um, notify uh, traffic in the area of what we're up to. Okay. It's kind of a self-announced philosophy. Right. Like a blinker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and just like a blinker, if you don't use it, you can confuse people around you. Yeah. I forgot that we had to come back in underneath uh, Kansas City's airspace, so we'll be kind of descending back into a few of the bumps. It won't be bad, but you'll feel a little, just a little bit bumpy. I see. So the different rings are different yep. elevations of air? Right. Okay. The furthest ring is the highest up because that's where the planes are coming from. Right. And as you get closer to the surface, they get lower and lower and lower until at, this, at the runway environment, the airspace goes all the way to the ground. They don't want anybody out there, you know, right around the airport uh, causing problems. Right. It's also important for people that are flying drones. You can't fly in their airspace without permission. I see. Because they don't want uh, somebody's quadcopter messing up a southwest flight coming in to land. <laughs> no. Yeah, Cool. I gotta show the kids. Yeah. Totally understand the addiction to this. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. Just like people that ride motorcycles, you know. I used to ride a motorcycle, and it was, it's an obsession. And then yeah, this is on a whole new level. Are you doing okay on time, or do you want to get back? I don't care. Okay, I'm then good. I, then I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little detour. Okay, uh, we're gonna go over to. Uh, I want to go see what the Liberty Corn Maze looks like. So we'll go spy oh, from here. Oh, hey, that's cool. So I'm going to change direction and kind of 
climb back up above the, the bumps, and we'll just kind of go around Kansas City until we get over to, towards Liberty. Okay. And it's not that big of a diversion. It'll take us an extra 20 minutes or so. But I didn't want to do it if you were uh, feeling pressed for time. Uh, I'm good. I'm good till sometime this afternoon. Okay. It's amazing, it doesn't feel that fast. Yeah. And you do 140 in a car and you really know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this airplane tops out at about 170, 175 or so. And um, unless you're like right close to the ground, uh, you have a hard time getting right. a sense of how fast that really is. Yeah, because I mean, even when we're taking off, it looks we're we're hauling ass. Yeah. What's your takeoff speed typically? Uh, I usually break the ground at about sixty. No kidding. Yeah. So you keep the nose down while. Yeah, keep the nose down to let it accelerate. That way you get you don't have, you're not fighting lift. Right. If the nose is up, the wing is trying to make lift. Right? Oh, so, yeah, the wings make lift, right. But. Yeah, and so two things will happen. It'll slow you down. It'll slow your acceleration down. Right. And it will also tend to take you off as soon as it, it possibly can. So you just get the nose down a little bit, and that kills the lift. It allows you to accelerate, and then you can rotate and take off. That's the way I like to do it. Um, there's nothing wrong with just sort of letting, it, letting the nose stay there and letting it fly off when it's ready. Uh, that's a perfectly valid way to do it. Seems like you would want more speed before you make the ascent. So uh, Dale mentioned while we were eating, he said, uh, you know, early on, you don't know what type of plane you want. You know, do you want a go-fast airplane to travel in? Right. Do you want something that's just inexpensive for just getting up and, and goofing off in? High wing, low wing. Um, you know, there's lots of different things you could potentially want to do in your airplane. If uh, traveling for business is your goal, um, you know, that takes you in a certain direction. Uh, but if you want a plane that is just nice to fly, on a Saturday morning, and you want to fly above and look down at the at the ground, uh, a slow high wing airplane where you can see right down and uh, just yeah. sort of get down there and enjoy being up in the air. You know that might be exactly what you want. Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense.
the old Red Baron plane. Yeah. Actually, uh, there there's a group, uh, the Dawn Patrol, that flies out of Liberty, and they have replica World War I uh, biplanes, including a triplane. They end up like the Red Baron, yeah. That's <laughs> pretty cool. And they're cool airplanes. Uh, you know, they have a, a really neat look to them. You know, they look antique. Although they're not exact reproductions, uh, they're really replicas. Uh, they they simulate the size and appeal and, to a degree, the flight characteristics. Right. But they're built differently and all that. But you find, uh, you know, those old airplanes had some big compromises. Uh, they weren't that strong. They weren't that maneuverable. Uh, not a lot of creature comfort in them. Right. All right, so although it's hard to see, Roosterville is right out over there. There's a little cutout in the trees. That's where the airport is. And if you look just slightly to the left, you'll see the new high school out there, Liberty High School. Uh, there's like a big field, kind of an oblong field. It's over, it's over okay, right over there. Yeah, yeah. That's Liberty High School. Um, I see it. And then uh, we've got Kearney over here. So, um, and then uh, Excelsior Springs is over there. So that's Liberty North, right? And from here you can get and a good. I think I can see. I can see your car. Yeah. Yep. The high school is a great visual reference for the airport because it is so close. Right. And uh, uh, you know you can see the stadium pretty well. You know with the, the red track and all that. Yeah. What kind of fees do you pay to keep your plane at air at uh, Roosevelt? So say that again. What kind? What kind of rent do you pay at the Roosevelt? Yeah, I do. I keep talking. What kind of what? Rent you pay at Roosterville? Oh, uh, hangar rent. Uh, it's eighty dollars a month for the spot. That's it. That's it. Yeah. No more maintenance costs or anything on top of that. For nope. The... That's just it. Now that's the cheapest around. I bet. Uh, over at this other airport over here. They're 300 a month. That's for a nice new enclosed hangar, right. lights, 
power doors, uh, all that. Roosterville is basically just a shelf, um, but it's the cheapest around. You can't beat it. Uh, you go downtown uh, at Wheeler, down there, uh, right across the river from downtown. Uh, those hangers are anywhere from about 275 to about 450, depending on the size of the hanger. Right. Really not that bad. Yeah, um, and that's why a lot of a lot of rural airports, when they have free hangers, people are like waiting in line to rent them out. They want to use them as a shop or a storage unit or whatever, because you can't get a storage unit that size for 80 bucks a month. A uh, chance. So there's kind of there's always a pull between keeping the hangar available for airplanes to use, right, and uh, and paying the rent from someone who wants to rent the space and it's open. So I see. Yeah. I'll be damned. All right. So if you look out there uh, in that cornfield, you'll see like a long, skinny building. That's a that's a little hangar building over there, uh, and a grass runway. That's that's Liberty Landing. That's where the Dawn Patrol flies out of. And so oftentimes you'll see those little biplanes and that Red Baron guy buzzing around over there. Right, right down there. Right down there, yeah. Okay. And I like this perspective because you can really see, you know, the high ground, and then, you know, you drop down into the river valley, and you can see the difference in elevation. It's about 200 feet difference between the river bottom and the rest of the ground. And you can see that, how the river bottom has carved out the... Uh, you know, this low right. ground here. All right, I'm going to drop down. Bring the power back and uh, slow down a little bit so we can drop in here and get a get a look at what the corn maze is up to. Yeah, it's almost like the river was much bigger. Well, the river migrates back and forth continuously. So it's fixed right there now, but in a hundred years it might move a quarter mile, uh, and in a few thousand years it'll be all over the place. Right, that's true. So, you know, our perspective is pretty narrow. Uh, we don't see how the river is constantly moving. All right, well, there's the corn maze right down there. Good look at that. <laughs> I gotta get a shot of that for the girls. I'm going to bring the kids over maybe uh, maybe next weekend. Okay. But uh, if you haven't been, it's, uh, it's a fun time. Yeah, that's awesome. They usually go to uh, the corn maze over uh, off 210. Uh-huh. Oh, I guess. Oh, hell, this is it. <laughs> That is 210. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one. I'll be damned. Hey, we've been through that maze several times. It's a good time. <laughs> this is so neat. We'll see if the Dawn Patrol is out flying today. So do other aircraft pop up on here too, or is this strictly GPS? Yeah, so this little uh, black plus one zero, that's another airplane that was in the area over behind us. That plus one zero is his altitude rev relative to us. 
So he's he's ten hundred feet or a thousand feet above us. Okay. Well, there's somebody down there. The hangar door is open, but I don't see any cars and I don't see any airplanes out. So. Oh, well, there's one out. Is that Liberty Hospital up there? Yeah, I think so. Seeing the world from this perspective really kind of makes you feel makes you feel almost insignificant in the grand scheme of things right yeah it uh it, it really puts things in perspective of where things are uh right. you know relationship wise and it does it gives you that greater sense so you realize uh you know we're a pretty insignificant part of the landscape yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> and you can see things like the river, you know. Oh, I get it, yep. you know. That's why we got to do a lot of work on the river to keep it in its banks. Is because I can see it now. Historically, this river's been all over the place. Yeah. You know, why would it want to stay right where it is? It's right. never done that before. You know, and it starts to make sense. Oh, it takes a lot of effort to make it stay there. Graduate machine. Traffic RV 01 Romeo is left downwind midfield to one six full stop at so, and if it wasn't for the fact that... Traffic, that's the full risk of the department area to the northwest, Rickville. Oh, he's... My name is Traffic, Tri-Pacer 37 Charlie, turning base, uh, up runway 3, Miami County. So, that other guy was leaving the area to the northwest, he said, so... He just took off from Roosterville, right over there, and he's going that way. Um, we might see him here in a second. I see him on the map there. So we got a guy coming in uh, slightly above us from this side, and a guy leaving over there. Uh, they're the purple blob. Uh, they're the black diamonds with the with the orange arrows. Oh, okay. Your radio works. Uh, traffic, traffic issue, please have a travel. Turn final, runway three. Uh, it was on a different frequency, to, just because it was quiet. And I switched back to our local frequency, and everybody's talking. Ah, uh, yeah. Way up there. Hey, let's bring it up right there. Uh, Charlie, 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 uh, 
That that jet doesn't pop up on here. Uh, oh, he that's too high. He, yeah, he may be so high as to not be uh, displayed. He may be just uh, flying through the area. Uh, he's high enough that I don't even think he's going to land in Kansas City. If he was going to land, he would probably be a lot lower already. Yeah. All right, so what this is showing is we got people basically right out in front of us. We got one guy over here and one guy over here. Um, so it's a one two eight two zero requesting uh, airport advisory, please. I see one in front of us there. Yep, there he is. Kansas City Skyhawk six five zero five Echo departing the pattern to the south. And there's a second one slightly off to the right. Which I don't see yet. I don't see him. Traffic. That was the. Uh, That's the traffic. Your key point. The display calling out traffic for us. Six miles to the southeast. Just a bit. Miami County, Cessna 37 Lima is 10 miles to the northeast inbound for 03 Miami County. All right, so we got 435 coming up here right off the nose. And that's uh, cooking. Please have a traffic system 12820. For about one mile northeast, be entering the pattern for 11. That's cooking ham right there. Yep. So we're going to fly over, uh, do a quick loop over your shop here. Please have a traffic I think I see it over there already. Please have a traffic center 12820. Midfield now, turning uh, to your right. Downwind for 1-1. One, one. Oh, there's somebody out at the RC field flying. Traffic to D-1673 is nine miles to the east and down for full stop on 1-1 one, 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 or a right hand downwind for 1-1. One, one, That's the traffic, Cherokee 1016 Lima, and then uh, left downwind at 45 for 1-6. That's the traffic. Miami County traffic, that's a 375, five miles north of the airport, will be entering a left down with the runway 03, Miami County. Please summon traffic, that's a 12820, turning base now for 11. We appear to be number two. Traffic jumps away in one minute, uh, 11,500 right over the top. One jumper. So 
somebody just called a one minute warning on a skydiver. I don't know where though. Action traffic, Cherokee 1016 Lima. Really? Yeah. On a one six stop action traffic. I know uh, they jump out of Noah's Ark, but I don't think that was them. Miami County traffic, 737 meters entering a left downwind runway 0 3 Miami County. Based on the traffic, Cherokee 1673 is 5 miles to the east and down for full stop on 1 1. Yeah, we got birds all over. Um, and uh, sometimes they move, sometimes they don't. It gets a little dicey. Uh, yeah. Traffic, Cadaville 3 is descending to the southwest, 10, 1, 0, 000, inbound for 173. Cadaville traffic, the end of the 304 Victor will be crossing overhead at uh, 2200, overfly the town and back for. Uh, So that's Roosterville right out in front of us. Yep. Roosterville traffic, Sonic 604, Charlie Mike, John Wynn, 36, Roosterville. And there's a plane Based on the, on the tower traffic. Truck. Cherokee 1673 is entering right hand downwind for a full stop on uh, 1 1. Uh, Least of the traffic. <laughs> traffic, that's the 370 Lima turning left base runway 03 Miami County. I see my dad's old house. Oh, yeah. So hopefully that guy will take off and get out of her way, otherwise, we're going to have to go around and give him room. He's sitting on the end of the runway for takeoff. Okay, he's going. All right, now just watch your leg. We don't want to bump these flaps here. Okay. He'll be pulled off. What's he doing? Miami County, Cessna 3 turning final, runway 03, Miami County. Roosterville traffic, Sonics on base 36. And I see traffic holding short of the runway. Are you going to take off, sir? Uh, negative, sir. I'm going to hold on, uh, hold on for your landing there, Sonic. Uh, this is uh, Cessna Skyline uh, 1711 Whiskey. Okay, thanks. Sonic's turning final, Roosterville. Hey, Sonic traffic, that's a 12820, turning right down, wind for 11, one, one. appear to be number 2 for landing. We have some traffic, Cherokee 8673, turning base for full stop on 11, one, one. need some traffic. Ooh.
I normally don't land in the grass, but I'm having problems with these flaps. So I wanted to get slowed down. Uh, anyway, so we got the little hop over the, the pavement. Okay. Regional traffic, uh, Skyline 11 Whiskey, it's party 36, Regional. That was pretty neat jumping over that. Yeah. But the plane was still kind of sort of flying, so yeah. it kind of just set us back down. <laughs> 